Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob LHR podcast. I'm your host, Jacob LHR, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. It's our fifth anniversary season, so if you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. If you're listening to this through our audio platform, download this episode and more episodes. And don't forget to please subscribe on any audio platform you find the podcast on. I am honored and thrilled to welcome one of my favorite people on. He has, as of this recording, he has over 250,000 Instagram followers. And he is an actor known for Supernatural, How to Get Away with Murder, and General Hospital. He's also the former Entertainment Night correspondent and weekend anchor. And he's also the host of MC on the Mic and the co host of the Cobra podcast. Please help me welcome Matt Cohen to the podcast. Wow, what an introduction, Jacob. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to say congratulations on your five year anniversary. That's a big deal. It's a big commitment, and I love to see it. Just keep on going and keep on shining, my friend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really mean it means a lot to you. it means a lot to me to have you here because I really admire what you've gone through from acting to going on Entertainment Tonight, which one of my dream roles, to being on shows like How to Get Away with Murder, Supernatural, and General Hospital. Not one that have several of the biggest fan bases in the world. So it's great to see you here. And thank you so much for taking time on your schedule to talk with me today. Yeah, and same to you. I appreciate you sitting down and taking the time and giving me a, giving me a moment to uh, uh, you know shine some light on me, and I'll shine some light back on you, and we'll have a we'll have a nice talk here. Hopefully, people will like it. All righty, so let's get started. So, when did you get interested in performing, and how did that passion evolve the desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Well, to be a hundred percent honest and transparent, I was uh, I was at the Florida State University, and I was uh, in my third year there. And at the same moment, my my dad, who has a, a auto body paint shop in South Florida, had a customer walk in. That customer saw a picture of me on the wall. That customer also happened to be the father of a young man represented by a talent manager. He saw my picture on the wall. He said, let me take this picture to my kid's talent manager and see what she says. He's got a great look. And one thing led to the next. She started bringing me down for for meetings like uh, for about two months straight. And I was horrible. She was trying to audition me. She was trying to get me to read. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never really acted before other than some kind of intro to acting classes at Florida State University and of course your kind of typical drama classes at um, American Heritage High School down in South Florida and the short long of it is she said if you want to really try to be an actor you got to go to LA I'll take you out for pilot season and we'll see what happens and a month later I was living in Los Angeles without a clue about what I was doing or why I was doing it but I was excited to have a new potential path of life that didn't involve school, believe it or not. And I was a straight A student with perfect attendance through high school. I got to college and I thought, wow, more of the same, more, more school and more studying. And, and I want to do something else. I want to be creative. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to push myself and test myself, test my limits. And if in my mind I failed after six months or a year in LA, I come back and I, and I go to school. Well, here we are nearly 20 years later. I'm still in Los Angeles and I have not um, taken any other jobs other than within the entertainment business. So to say I picked it would be wrong to say the entertainment industry found me would absolutely be correct. Why, while the industry found me, I found my passion for the creative arts and I just haven't turned back since. I have one skill set now. It's acting, directing, and entertainment. This is what I do, and um, I love to do it, and I want to do it forever. And you have been so passionate about it. You had so many incredible opportunities. So I want to get talk uh, touch base on four of them right now in the acting world. So let's talk about Aiden Dennison from Noggin, South of Nowhere. Aiden Dennison, um, it was my first acting job. It was a series regular on a smash hit show called South of Nowhere, which tackled storylines at the time, which were unheard of. TV Guide actually voted the show um, one of the, the top teen 
lesbian dramas uh, of the time. And it was really breaking ground because there wasn't a lot of stories and there wasn't a lot of characters being represented like this. We had um, two girls. One now is my wife, Mandy Musgrave. She played Ashley on the show and her girlfriend, Spencer. And I was kind of the third wheel to that relationship that was really there, uh, the shoulder of support. And I wanted these girls to fall in love while I was trying to work my way through high school situations. And it was really a beautiful experience. I didn't know how to stand on a mark or what to do when they called action. And I learned there under the great um, leadership of people like Tommy Lynch, the creator of the show, along with Nancy Lee, Myatt, um, just some wonderful, wonderful people. And of course, here I am 20 years later, still married to the wonderful Mandy Musgrave. We have a son that's about to turn nine years old. So without South of Nowhere, I have nothing. It has given me all of my life. Every, every important thing that matters to me came from that show. And when I say that, I mean family. It gave me a family, both blood related and an extended family that carries me through to this day. And I'm very close with many of those people. So forever, forever gratitude uh, for South of Nowhere and Aiden Dennison, the actor that kind of, you know, the, the character that allowed this actor to develop into uh, something other than just a guy that wanted to be on TV, you know, you really felt passionate about the storylines. What I was allowed to do on the show was tremendous. And here we are. Keep on going. And it's amazing. So we're going from that show that was so important to you and how it built your family to another one that extended your family, extended your fan base. You, I'm talking about Supernatural because you had the opportunity to play not one, but three characters, the young well, John Winchester and then Michael slash Lucifer. Yes. I mean, what an experience. And speaking of family, I just got back from two conventions back to back, one here in Los Angeles, one in Australia. And when it comes to family, the supernatural fandom has a saying and it's family don't end with blood. And it really doesn't. We have blurred the line between the actors on the show and the ta and the and the talented fandom, the very talented fandom that supports that show and has extended their self to be part of my family. Uh, they've carried me through in, in, an, in another way where. You don't realize, but the bodily embrace of people simply giving hugs and sharing conversations, whether they're triumphant or conversations of defeat, it's so wildly important to connect with a fan base because they can become your family and they want to support everything you do. And if it wasn't for the Supernatural fandom and all of the fandoms I've been involved with, but specifically the Supernatural fandom, you know, I don't know that I would have been able to exist in Hollywood. I've did about 150 conventions over 10 years and then the pandemic came and I did about two over four years and now I'm back on the circuit and I feel whole again. My heart feels full. My soul feels right. And um, I just want to really bring some joy uh, to the people that love that show and support what I do. And Supernatural, like you said, it's the rare opportunity to play more than one character uh, within a guest starring role. So they brought me in simply because I, Robert Ulrich, the great casting director, brought me in because I looked like Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I got in the office. He said, man, he held my picture up and he went, wow. I hope you don't suck. Put the picture down. And then I auditioned for him. And luckily enough, I didn't suck. He brought me back for a callback. In that room for the callback was the great and powerful, the almighty creator of Supernatural, Eric Kripke, who we know now, the superpower of the boys on Amazon. If you haven't seen it, check it out. We love this show. And uh, he actually wrote on the first movie I ever did, Boogeyman 2. So all these dots and moments uh, connected as well as me looking enough like JDM to uh, be cast in the role. And so I did. I went in there and I played a 1970s version of Sam and Dean's father, uh, John Winchester. And then they brought me back to play the vessel of Michael, which is the archangel. And then later on, and I believe it was season 11, they brought my vessel back of John Winchester in a car and a dream in a fantasy scenario where I'm sitting in the, the car with, with Sam, played by Jared Padalecki, and we have this long conversation, and he doesn't know if he's talking to his dad or to Lucifer or to God or who I am. But I was able to deliver these messages through Lucifer, and um, 
it's just been tremendous. And then later on in the in the end of the show, I was able to direct uh, episode fifteen fifteen and have my first experience on network television directing a big show, a big action sci fi show, and it just was. It was the most rewarding uh, moment in my career to have spent so many, so many years working with the fans, working with this crew, working with this actor of the show to come in there five episodes from the final episode ever of Supernatural and be able to direct actors that I love, Jared and Jensen and Misha and Alex Calvert and so many others, so many wonderful guest stars. It was it was such a blessed and beautiful moment. And again, you know, I hold every job I've ever had close to my heart. Specifically, Supernatural is a large piece of my heart. So it was just, it was so special from beginning to end. And I carry it on now. You can see me in like 10 or 15 cities this year, telling stories from the show, making you laugh, giving hugs and sharing uh, beautiful sentiments of life and, and connecting with that fandom. So come out and see us. We're all over the place. And as someone that loved conventions and pop comic cons and pop culture circuits, you do. I want to say thank you so much for going and attending because a lot of these cities and a lot of these fans, that's their one of their big moments of their year is meeting people like you and people like all these amazing. I just had a couple of times a couple of weeks ago, it was playing a comic con in Kansas City. And I was so grateful to meet people like Ian McDermott and Danielle Fischel and Corbin Blue and the legendary voice actress Diane Pershing, the very first woman who played Poison Ivy in Batman animated series because Batman's one of my all time favorites. So wow. those moments are so endearing and probably the top moments of their year. Yeah, I, I would say that as much as it matters for the fandom, it's just as important to the actors or the talent or the directors or the musicians, whoever you're, you're seeing. I think for a long time, uh, actors in Hollywood had this strange stereotype of conventions being, oh, is that just a cash grab you do in between jobs? And I think for some actors, it might be that, but not for many. I can tell you when you go to a convention and you meet people that support what you do and they've collectively come together and made new friends and now they're sharing hotel rooms with people they didn't know at the beginning of the weekend they're sharing stories they know each other's pets names they're sharing articles of clothing it really unites people in such a beautiful way i find conventions to be wildly important and i think it's even more important for the actors of these shows to show up and support the people that watch your stuff and allow you to work and while you do get paid to be there, it's so much more than that. The stories and moments I've shared with people of all ages, from holding newborn babies and uh, hearing people's uh, uh, challenging moments in life and me relating to them and able to share my own, it's, it's really therapy both directions and it's a connection of humanity, which is much needed right now. We really need to step back at least in in the united states if not worldwide and look and build our sense of community we need to invest in each other as human beings i've been saying this thing lately humanity needs humanity it's just that simple we're so busy in, on, on our tribal decision making of oh i'm on this side i'm on that side i don't like this i don't like that like let's like it all Let's like it all. Let's give people space to mess it up, recover, fix it, and grow. Given a new perspective and, a, and a, a new compromise, we can all be better people, but we can't do it if we alienate each other based on one thing we said or one thing we did. Let's give each other some space to be awesome. Supernatural conventions, conventions worldwide allow uh, you know, the actors to connect with people on just that front. And I really think it's a, a one of the greatest pieces of humanity, spending time with the people that support your work. And that's amazing to hear. So speaking of community and fandom, there's a major, major soap opera fandom that mm -hmm. would be very happy that we need to take a trip to Port Charles. So many of my audience, including my mom, hi, mom. She is it there. We are fans of General Hospital. So many of my audience recognize you from your time as Dr. Griffin Monroe. So what were some of the lessons that you learned during time on the long running ABC soap that helped you grow as an actor? 
Well, I'll tell you this. Um, shout out to the General Hospital fandom. It's an incredible fandom. Uh, it also ranges from all ages. I know kids that watch it with their grandma and grandmothers that have to watch it with their kids just discovering it for the first time. It is beautiful. It is binding. It connects the all the people that are a supporter of Port Charles and General Hospital, and it's great. And if I learned anything, and I learned a lot of things being on that show. But if I learned anything, it's that soap actors are some of the hardest working actors and most talented individuals in Hollywood. There wasn't a day on that set where I did less than 50 pages of dialogue in a day. I would sometimes do that five days a week and shoot 10 episodes or eight episodes in a week, which is wild if you know anything about a show like Supernatural where we shoot one episode over eight days. I could do six, eight, ten episodes in five days on General Hospital. So it really sharpens your skills. It really gives you the ability to retain information um, and, and practice your craft on a level that most actors could only dream of having this much dialogue, this much content to produce and, and bring out of themselves uh, on a weekly basis. It is a training ground to to get great at your craft. And, and that I am forever grateful as well as some of the crew uh, and the behind the scenes people who I love so much. We've lost many people uh, in and around general hospital and it's, it's caused much heartache in me and, and people I know involved with the show, but an amazing crew of people, amazing actors who I love so much, who taught me so much, who elevated my performance tremendously it just was a special experience. And let me just say this right now. If I can cause some drama in Port Charles, I'm happy to go back and visit. I don't know where the storylines are now or where where Griffin would come to visit, but Griffin's got lots of stories to tell. And I am willing and ready to pop my head back in Port Charles. Should they have me? Should the audience accept me? Should the executives want me back? Hey, I'm a phone call away and I'd love to continue those stories. Griffin was a challenging character for me. He was a neurosurgeon and a priest, okay? I am a guy who didn't spend a lot of time early in his life in church whatsoever. I had v very little understanding uh, of the Bible and, and all that it embodies. And then neurosurgery? I mean, let's get real. I'm a street kid that grew up in boxing gyms, racing motorcycles, and doing anything dangerous. Basically, the polar opposite of going to med school and learning, you know, uh, 10 years of medical information. Now I hop on General Hospital, I audition, I get this job, and next thing I know, I am delivering medical terminology where that I have to Google the words just how to pronounce them as well as religious terminology, which I also have to have somebody reiterate to me because I don't even know if I'm saying it right. You can't really add ums and ahs into Bible verses. It sounds like you don't know what you're talking about. So quite challenging. And I feel like it really uh, it really exercised, you know, my my tools as an actor. And I appreciate that forever. And again. If I could get back in there and shake things up in poor Charles, how could it not be fun? You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying because it be, was so great seeing you. You fit, you held your own against several major players in the daytime world. Maurice, Laura Wright, Fiona Hughes, Jane Elliott, Roger Hireworth, and more West. Maura West, the 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 queen amongst queens. I'm in love with her as a human being. I love her family. I uh, she lives not far from me, and I I could only hope to share the screen with Maura West and any of the names you mentioned. I just you know sitting down with Maurice for his State of Mind episode. We actually off camera. I was like, hey, here's my pitch. You want to bring me back? drop this pitch and i don't want to, to tell you guys to spoil it or anything but he's with it i'm with it you know we'll see what happens you never know what tomorrow brings all i know is today i'm here with you jacob we're having a great conversation so i'm going to live in this moment if tomorrow brings me back to general hospital great you and i sit down and we talk all about it again you'd be the first interview i do you hear it, heard it here first folks i'd be so happy if that I can put that out in the universe. Let's put that in the universe. Do it. Throw it out there. Start the lawnmower. Hit the throttle. Let it go. If it goes somewhere and comes back to us, great. But you heard it here. I will give Jacob the exclusive first interview the second I know if I'm ever stepping back foot on uh, the Port Charles General Hospital uh, world. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So we got to leave poor Charles and talk about da 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 da. Yes, yes. Let's and talk about your time with Entertainment Night because what I admire about you, Matt, is because you went from transitioned from actor to being a correspondent, and that's what I that's what I admire about you is like that amazing transition. So why? What was the first time that you heard? Okay. I want to go and be part of this incredible group of reporters. Well, I had no idea what I was doing. And I did a general hospital convention with the great company creation entertainment, uh, here in Los Angeles and Burbank, California. And on that stage, I guess I was noticed by, uh, entertainment tonight, executive producer, Aaron Johnson, who is just a, crusher when it comes to just having a grasp on the entertainment world and all that it is she's brought that show to such a lovely place um, achieving several daytime emmys in the process and she really knows what she's doing so she brought me in for a meeting and said hey can you do this and i said hey i don't have a clue hand me a microphone and let's find out and she was brave enough and trusted me enough to put me out there and and risk her bottom by putting a guy in that really had no idea how to host or be a correspondent or any of that stuff. I have big energy and I like to bring the energy to whatever I do. And if I could bring the energy and the enthusiasm, that will carry me through while I learn exactly what it is I'm supposed to be doing here. She always told me something very important that sticks with me to this day. And Jacob, you should take this piece of advice doing what you do because it's a lovely piece of advice. Try to create a moment with the person you're talking to. It, if, if you don't get one of your questions answered, that's okay. Try and create a moment. And for example, I'll give you this. And you could always find these clips out there on Entertainment Tonight, somewhere online or whatever. A couple of moments, examples that I mean... I was with uh, the 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 great Benedict Cumberbatch, and we were on a red carpet. I forget the premiere. It was a huge premiere. I think a superhero movie. And he walks right up to me. And I, Entertainment Tonight gets first position on most red carpets. They are the premier, um, you know, entertainment news magazine. And and he walks right up to me and and just goes, "This guy." This guy should be in the movie, not, you know, not doing the interviews. And in a moment like that, a, a, a thespian I respect so much and Benedict to come up and make it about me. And then I don't even know what to say to him because he's so lovely. You're creating a moment. And then later, I think I talked to Rachel McAdams and she didn't have a lot of time. And I asked her what she would do if she wasn't an actress. And she said she'd be a farmer or a cropper or something like that. And then I hit her with. What's your crop of choice? And literally, <laughs> she didn't even know what I said. She was like, what? what? I could see in her eyes go, why did you ask me that question? That has nothing to do with entertainment. And it was just a moment. And I think she an answered fennel of all things, which just makes us love Rachel McAdams more. Because, yes, she's beautiful. Yes, she's talented. Yes, we've watched her in every movie and fallen in love with her. But when she has a real moment and, and we create a moment together and she wants to be a cropper growing fennel, that's something, I don't know, if she's probably never told anybody. And it created just such a beautiful exchange between the two of us. So entertainment tonight, you, you, you learn a lot. And the most important thing is, is to connect with a person, make the moment happen, create something spontaneous and spectacular. It's not about getting that one agenda question about the thing that you really you know, think that you're going to air on your podcast or on your, your network show or whatever it is, really create the moment with the celebrity, create the moment with the talent or whoever you're talking to. And it's just, it just feels human. And everybody again, needs a little bit of humanity. So stars are stars, but they're also human. So let's have some humanity with the stars. Let's not pry into their life too much unless they're willing and give them a real moment of you who who are you look them in the eye and let them know you're not there like a hyena just to grab sound bites to make something happen you actually want to be a human being with them and i think everybody appreciates that at the end of the day 100 percent, 100 percent. what i got in this industry to my heroes who were like we were regis philbin and barbara walters who had lengthy careers and They've gone on to that. And I saw there's some, not to mention any names, but there's some people in the 90s, late, late, or late 2000s and early 2010s that really 
discarded the entertainment industry and made it really difficult. And I want to try to make sure that I want to bring the prestige back of the entertainment, the entertainment news in like the good fashion, like with Regis and Barbara Walters without prying into anybody. Yeah. And that's, listen, that is a beautiful intention to have doing this job. This job can easily turn to, oh, I can get a bunch of clicks if this is the title, if this is the one clip I use of Matt saying something, you know, some profanity or just whatever the thing is, or, or you can depend on your ability as a journalist, host, and correspondent and deliver some content that is real and is a real conversation. And who knows, could help somebody from hearing us talk. You know, there are many things that you don't realize how, how deeply they affect the viewer. And you should always be aware that you will have an effect, whether it's negative or positive, you will have an effect on the person viewing. So like you said, let's have some prestige about it. Let's, let's make it mean something more than just, Hey, I'm asking questions to a famous person. Let's allow it to resonate. Let's try to get a message across. Let's talk openly and honestly with transparency. Things like that are very important. I appreciate them at least. You know, I think that, you know, showing your humanity to somebody just allows them to open up to you. And and we need to open up to each other. At the end of the day, it's really the human experience is that when I get off of this video chat and you hang up, that you sit there and think about it like a good movie where you go, man, what happened to so-and-so after that part? It should be the same way in a conversation. If I'm here and I'm engaging with you when we hang up, I should think, man, Jacob really did a good job sitting down with me and and asking the questions, but also following up on the things and the, and the moments that we had together. And it's beautiful to sit and then contemplate what just happened rather than just let it fly by. Contemplate it. Enjoy it. Take this moment. Every single conversation I've had, I've been awestruck of every pe- person I've met. And Matt, definitely, I'm having, God say this is early, but one of my favorite conversations of 2024 oh. so far. I'm so glad. And I I want nothing else but to leave you in a positive way. And I want to leave you lit up for the rest of the week. It's Monday. Let me be your cup of coffee that lasts till next Monday. And let me fill you up. And let me tell you, Jacob, you're doing a great job. I promise you, you can do this. You, there's nothing you can't do. You simply have to just get up, put your right foot down, and then your left foot a little bit further, and then your right foot a little bit further, and just keep going. And times will get hard. You will battle depression, anxiety, the ups and downs of life, whatever that may be to you. But like the water and the moon, the tides change, okay? The tide will come in. It'll be crashing at your feet. It'll feel overwhelming. But if you sit there and you stay there long enough, guess what? That tide starts to pull back out. And when that tide starts to pull back out, you'll get clarity. You'll be able to observe things with calmness. And you'll understand, I was able to make it through whatever storm you were battling to the other side because there's always going to be a storm but past the storm is sunshine and you'll always find that sunshine as long as you open your eyes and keep moving thank you i appreciate it of course all righty i definitely think this is definitely a challenge because i've definitely been facing some challenges lately so i definitely needed to hear that Yeah. And you're not alone is another thing we say within the supernatural fandom a lot. Always keep fighting and you are not alone. And I don't mean to say them to connect. So somebody goes and buys a t-shirt from whoever's. It is literally you're not alone in your struggles. I struggle. I struggle all the time. But guess what? Always keep fighting. Always keep fighting for yourself, for the people around you. And just know everybody's experiencing something difficult. And if you just keep on moving, you'll understand difficult doesn't have a negative connotation. You need difficult to understand what easy and good feels like. And so when you're in difficult times, understand this is good. And this is just what hard feels like. It's okay for it to feel hard. If you don't know what hard feels like or tough times, you'll never appreciate 
the glory and the gift of easy living when it does show up on your doorstep. So listen, you got this. And I hope people out there, I hope this, this message resonates with them because we're all the same. We're all made out of stardust and we're all going to end up dirt one day. And so let's be here for each other. Let's elevate each other. Let's lift each other up and let's keep on going forward. We're going to heal this country, we're going to heal our communities. And it starts with people like me investing in you and you investing in me mentally and from our soul and from our heart. That's just, it just is what it is. Humanity needs humanity, Jacob. And Matt, you do a phenomenal job because I've seen your soul. I've seen your Instagram. You do amazing work from your motivate, from the ice baths that you encourage your followers to do from your fitness challenges and your motive and, and and like your motive motivational stuff you are, do amazing work so could you please i would love to learn how you were able to build that build that content and how you decide which motivation do you guys use do you do a fitness motivation one day or like a lot a chat a chat an ice bath chat the other day i would love to learn about that i am trying to figure out exactly what i'm doing i'll tell you this it came from a place of the pain of wanting to change. And so this year I decided January 1st, I'm going to read every book about neuroscience. I'm going to read all the books I can about biohacking and what we can do um, kind of naturally to progress our health, both physical and mental, without running to the doctor and taking five pills for this or that or the other thing. What can we do just shifting uh, our energy and, and using God's gifts, right? And so you learn a lot about cold water exposure and heat exposure and exercise and diet and how it all affects each other. And right. And so if you eat terrible, you don't have the minerals or the nutrients in your body to think well, you know, and so it starts with eating decent and, and eating clean and trying to you know, eat whatever you eat, whether it's for your proteins or your vegetarian or whatever, but eat better, drink some water, take care of yourself. The cold exposure thing for me became a challenge because I didn't like it. Now I'm the type of guy that if I don't like something, I got to figure out how to overcome it and get great at it. So I've literally delayed my cold plunge this morning, but as soon as we hang up, if you go to my Instagram, I'll be live in the cold water. Literally when we hang up five minutes after, I'm going in 40 degree water. I don't want to. I know it's difficult. And the reward that I'm going to get is I am going to overcome a difficult thing in three to five minutes. I'm going to get in cold water, something I don't want to do. I'm going to prove to myself that I can do it. I can take control of my mind. And just because my mind says, no, it's cold. I don't want to do it. Doesn't mean you can't do it. And so now I'm proving to myself that I can overcome something. And the science behind it is spectacular, right? So I don't want to get on here and, and start sounding like I'm a scientist because I'm not. Please do the research yourself. But lowering your cortisol, the stress hormone, it's great for your heart. Upping your dopamine, it feels amazing. People do hard drugs all the time, which kill them and boost their dopamine. If you get in a cold plunge for a couple of minutes, uh, a week, you're, you get a dopamine dump of like 250% that lasts hours. It's not like you're trying to get a short-term hit of something to feel good. This lasts for hours. It wakes up your senses. It wake, wakes up your mind. Anti-inflammatory benefits, testosterone boosting benefits. I don't know if you know, but as a man, testosterone is something that starts to decrease in your old age. Hi, I'm 41. And it's also a magical hormone that allow men to feel good, get up. It's really a driving force behind a lot of uh, things that we do. So that's a, you can naturally boost it through cold water exposure and then followed by a workout where you stay cold and you slowly warm up your body through a workout. And so all of these different things I'm doing, I'm doing it to help my mental health. I want to balance my mental and my physical health. And I want to affect people. And I want to say, hey, you don't have to have a lot of money to do these things. You don't have to see a doctor. Do, do the basics. Wake up, drink some water. Go put some natural sunlight in your eyes. Step outside and look off to the side of the sun and let your circadian rhythms wake up naturally 
before you chug 200 milligrams of caffeine. Let your body do what it's meant to do. Then do a workout, move your body. I don't care if you have nowhere to work out right now, right here in this three foot space. I can do push ups and squats and sit ups. That stuff feels good. And it's not about changing your body to look a certain way. It's about changing your mind so it feels significantly better because you did physical exercise that releases great chemicals in your body. And all these things I'm doing release chemicals naturally. Sunlight exposure, cold water exposure, a little bit of sauna, heat exposure, and exercise release hormonal changes and releases in your body that benefit you from thinking to being calm, to feeling happy, to feeling less anxious, all these great benefits. So that's all I'm trying to do. I don't have a single advertiser. I've started some subscriptions and I have a couple of subscribers and they get a bunch of bonus content, including me cooking in the kitchen with my family healthy meals. I'm going to release an all picture cookbook in about two or three months just to give people an easy way to be healthy. And that's all I'm trying to do with the cold plunge. Should advertisers come on board? Should somebody send me something free? Great. But right now, zero dollars, not making anything. I'm doing it because I want to affect people in a positive way. And I want them to know there are alternatives to going straight to medicine. There's what I, what I, what my cousin is a, is a, a pediatrician and he calls his, his practice integrative pediatrics because he's taking both Western medicine and also an approach of healthy eating and lifestyle changes and, and exercise and these other things. And he's bringing them together. So it's way less medicine and way more overall, just well-being, making smart choices in your daily basis. So all I'm trying to do is give people an opportunity to uh, live a happier, healthy, more whole life without sickness, with growing old, with a good quality of life. That's it. And it's not like I'm 85 or I'm getting towards the, the latter years of my life. Why not do it now? Why not start with the kids? Why do we wait until we're sick and then it's too late and then we have to take meds to stay alive? Let's get into our kids right now. Let's get them off of the sugar addiction. Let's get them off of the screen addiction. Let's show them that there's a real and wild world out there full of adventure and excitement. Let's show them that healthy foods can taste good. Just all these basic things we seem to have forgotten because as human beings, we're creatures of convenience. Whatever is the most opportunistic, convenient way to live that keeps us comfortable is what we choose. It's been too easy for too long. Let's struggle a little bit. Let's overcome and let's realize the benefit of just that struggling, overcoming and proving to yourself that you can get past it. That's it. And that's all I'm trying to do. And I'm passionate, wildly passionate about getting people healthy on their own because it gives you a power that's so exponential that just grows and grows and grows. And you keep on, oh, wow, I can eat this and feel good. I can not drink caffeine 10 hours before I go to bed and then I'll sleep better. I can wake up in the morning hungry and craving that, that meal that I'm going to have. I can not eat a bunch of junk food right before I fall asleep. So I sleep better. There's all these things. I can shut off the screens at eight o'clock when the sun goes down. My circadian rhythm knows it's time to start winding down. There's so much we can do that's so easy and it's free. Let's not make it difficult. Let's get better together. That's my stance. That's my mission. And you have a wonderful mission. But we got to start we, while we're winding down our conversation. I cannot let a fellow podcaster go without talking about your fellow podcast. You have two of them, MC on the, on the mic. And I love that you brought your brother in for the Cobras. Yes. Look, I am like you. I took the job at Entertainment Tonight. I loved what I did and I didn't want the conversations to end. So the way that I can keep the conversation going is by keeping the conversation going. So I immediately launched MC on the mic, which started with my son, Macklin. That's why it was MC on the mic, because it's Macklin Cohen, Matt Cohen, or Mandy Cohen on the mic. So I wanted everybody in my family to have ability to walk in this little studio I built and start spitting out whatever they want to spit. There's no rules. It doesn't have to be right. It's very Wayne's world. It's it's limited in production value. It's two chairs and people talking. And so the first, I don't know, 20 episodes are me and my son, Macklin, talking about nothing, video games, Legos. 
now it's evolving and it's evolving quickly. I have requests out the wazoo for podcasts and I want to entertain all of them. Um, I'm recently talked to the Ben Silverman, who's an AI expert. Tommy Lynch was the creator of South of Nowhere. Uh, Adam Rose, who is um, Soccer Roots, which is one of the greatest uh, psychological kind of um, soccer programs where where there is this man, Adam Rose, who's my my kids kind of a, a CEO or president of this soccer program. And he has a background in child psychology. And so he's teaching sports from a psychological standpoint, which is just so much better than parents standing on the sideline yelling, go, come on, try harder, do this. Instead of doing what we've done forever, let's recreate sports programs so kids benefit mentally and it's not just physical exercise them running around till they get irritated that they didn't perform they get sat on the bench the next guy moves in the psychological damage within that we can avoid and we can do better we could build better young athletes that are more mentally balanced and you know these are just things i'm learning about through the podcast and so you know i'm talking to friends from college that are in the hospitality industry i'm talking to experts in stem cell treatment. Just I'm inquisitive. I want to know everything about everybody. I want to know what you do, why you do it, and how come it's important to you. And the podcast has given me the ability to do that. In addition, I can bring my wife in. We could drink a margarita and we can talk about marriage. Hey, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty beneficial to people that have been in a relationship for 20 years. In the same day, I could sit my son in here and we could talk about the Legos that we built. And this is families communicating. This is people taking the time to have a conversation because there's not enough of it happening. It's a lot of, hey, I'm leaving to work. I'll see you later. Hey, I'm home from work. Here's a kiss. Let's eat dinner. Let's go to bed. I want more out of it. I want more out of my life. I want to be more for other people's lives. And I'm capable of influencing and uplifting people in a, in a way that I'm observant of. And I don't want to let that go to waste. So here we are, MC on the mic. You're going to find us on YouTube. I'm tr I, We're on Spotify. We are expanding as fast as I can expand. I'm doing everything myself from editing to lighting to everything. It's very just uh, a, a rooted, um, a rooted production. And in addition, my, my younger brother who we have 20 years different. So he's 21. I'm 41. He's got a very successful TikTok, uh, Tico fantasy show where he has in-depth sports analysis, but now he's expanding into pop, pop culture and, and anything, uh, journalism wise. And he's tr He's so good at it. So I thought, Let's get both of us talking. Let me bring you to all the conventions I go to. Let's do some live podcasts. Let's connect with the people. Let's meet people in the cities, go to their house, eat dinner with their family, and let's record it. Let's make it a mobile podcast of sorts, a mobile show of sorts. I don't know what it's going to be, but he's going to be with me in New Jersey in about a month, and we're going to see what happens. We, I want it to be... Anthony Bourdain from No Reservation meets Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs with two Cohen brothers called the Cobros. And we're here for a good time. We're here to have a positive effect on you. And we're here to make something entertaining by just connecting with people. That's it. No intention to sell you something or, or, or anything like that. We just want to connect with people and we want to do it and we want to have fun and we want to be accessible. And here we go. MC on the mic and Cobros. You can find us both on, on, on Spotify and my YouTube page, which I'm working out the understandings of YouTube and keywords and, and making it easier for people to search for me. I'm getting there, folks. Be patient. Um, and that's just it. That's just, you know, sitting down with people and having conversations. It's far more important than we think. It's far more important than we think. And as much as I love broadcast television and I love the TV uh, kind of structure, it is very hard to elaborate on a point when you have a commercial every six or seven minutes and you have to get a certain amount of those commercials in within your half hour or your hour or your show dies because the advertisers aren't going to pay you. I understand that and how it works and it's worked for a long time, but things are shifting and changing and there's more podcasts out there than you could ever imagine. So find somebody to listen to, find somebody that makes you feel good. And if it's MC on the mic or Cobros, come on, we're going to entertain you and we're going to keep on doing it till our shoes fall off. 
And Matt, I want to offer you myself as if you want to talk anything about the learnings about the Got Talent world, the DCU, the X Men world, Batman world. I'm your guy. All right. Well, we're going to have to do a follow up then where we just kind of talk about all of the big uh, kind of comic book and superhero and sci fi projects and development because, man, there's tremendous things out there. There's a lot being remade, a lot of sequels, a lot of prequels. We, you know, let's do a follow up episode next month or something where we talk about nothing but the stuff we geek out about. That's fun for me. All righty, Matt. That's amazing. So, Matt, one more time. Where can they find you on social media and where can they find all the stuff that you mentioned of MC on the mic and the Cobras? All right. Come find us at Matt Cohen for real on Instagram. It's just spelled M-A-T-T-C-O-H-E-N, the number four and then the word real. So Matt Cohen for real on Instagram, Matt Cohen for real on X, Matt Cohen for real on threads. I do not have a Facebook. Don't look for me there. Maybe I'll have one later, but for now I don't have one. As far as the YouTube page goes, search MC on the mic, search Matt Cohen, uh, put your little thing on to where it searches channels and hopefully I pop up. If not, I you'll find me out there some way. The easiest way to get me is on the top of all my socials, there's a bio site with links to everything that's available from me right now, whether it's the swag shop, I have some Vimeo uh, short film proof of concept that you could watch. Um, there's my link to my YouTube page. There's just all the links that you need in the, in the world of Matt Cohen. You could find at the top of, of Instagram X and threads. So look out and there's a lot of content coming out. So stay, stay in tune folks. All righty guys. If you missed an episode of the Jake's take with Jacob LHR podcast, this is our channels on Amazon music, Apple podcast, iHeart radio, pod chaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. Jake's Take with Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Oh, I'm on social media, too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And, guys, if you miss what's going on with The Masked Singer, want to find out what happened on America's Got Talent Fantasy League, find out my music reviews and more of my podcast interviews, visit the blog that started all, jakes-shake.com. Once again, jakes-shake.com. Matt, this was one of the best interviews I've had in a long time. It's an honor and thrill that you took your time out of your schedule to meet with me and speak with me. I really appreciate it. Yes, same back to you. It's nice to just sit down and have a conversation. And Jacob, I don't know you, but I know you now. We sat down. We appreciate each other. We shared a little bit of humanity. And I'm excited to see what you do next. So I'll be tuning in. And I hope everybody else does as well. All right. Thank you, Matt. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.